Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea and today I have another foundation review for you guys and I'm so excited about this one. We got time for it. This is the new Traceless Soft Matte Foundation. And if you don't know by now, I love foundations. Like of all the makeup products that there are to exist on this wonderful green earth of ours, foundation is a favorite of mine. So I'm very excited about this. I also love Tom Ford foundations. I have three other of them um, and I just cannot wait to try this one to give you my thoughts on it so if you're not fully aware when I do a wear test on a foundation first of all it's going to be a minimum of eight hours I'm going to do some flash photography to confirm or not if there's flashback and I also show us how the foundation applies with a sponge and a brush so stay tuned for all of those details but before we get into this video I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend some time with me if this is your first time here I would love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel and join the glam girl squad and if you are a returning subscriber well thank you so much for deciding to come back and support my channel with all of your likes and your comments it really does mean a lot to me so let's get into this video okay so we got to get some details out of the way once again we have the Tom Ford foundation now when I went to order this foundation because I was pressed I was on the website at midnight for some odd reason, they did not have my shade in stock, which normally I choose the shade 8.7, but they didn't have that. So I got shade 7.7. .7. This is the packaging of the foundation, and this is a plastic container. You twist it, and then the pump comes up for you to squeeze it out. I like this style of packaging for the foundation, number one, because as you're using it, I like that you can see how much you will use. I also like that even though it's not glass, it doesn't feel cheap at all. So this foundation does come in 40 shades. It retails for $88. And the shade that I have is 7.7 .7 Honey, which is described as a dark neutral undertone. It says that this is a soft focus matte foundation with a hydrating silky formula and medium to full coverage that will last all day. This particular foundation is suitable for all skin types, normal, dry combination and oily. It has hyaluronic acid in it that will hydrate and support the skin's natural moisture barrier. It also has an active blend of antioxidants, vitamin C and E and caffeine that will treat your complexion to all day ultra comfortable wear and the soft focus microsphere powders will diffuse and blur light this formula is humidity and sweat resistant dermatologist tested non-comedogenic and is designed for all skin types now something to point out about this particular foundation is that it does have lavender oil in it and so I'm looking at the ingredients and I also see alcohol in it. So I would say about mm, a little more than halfway down is where we see the lavender oil. Um, we see alcohol as the fifth ingredient. Um, so I just wanted to point those two things out. If those are ingredients that you try to steer, steer clear of, um, I, just, I just wanted to let you all know that ahead of time. Okay, so let's go into applying this foundation onto the skin. This is what one pump looks like. And I'll do a quick comparison of what shade 8.7 looks like on my skin so you all can see the difference. So I'm gonna take the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Foundation. That's the one that I have in shade 8.7. And just so you can see, this is 7.7 .7 and this is 8.7. I will do a quick swatch on my face so you can see what they look like side by side. And in all honesty, you all, the difference is very slight. Number one, first thing that we have to point out and address that I am a little bothered by is can we make sure that the shades are representative of what they look like on the complexion as well as the swatches. So if you go on Sephora's website or Tom Ford's website, it's the same across the board, and you look at the swatches to see engage which shade would be yours 8.7 shows up so much deeper i mean i'm talking like deep than what it actually is and i don't appreciate that because i'm like it makes it so much harder to figure out what your shade is that's why i'm doing swatches because if this is your first time purchasing a tom ford foundation or you're interested in it 8.7 is not nearly as deep and i will insert a picture so you all can see what i'm talking about because it is it's, it's just it's just so disturbing <laughs> so this is 7.7 .7. This is 8.7 and on all honesty, 
I can make both shades work. The biggest difference between the two shades, 7.7 .7 and 8.7, like we uh, mentioned earlier, 7.7 .7 is described as a dark neutral undertone, and then 8.7 .7 is dark warm olive undertones. So there is a slight difference. So I'm gonna take one pump, and in one pump, you don't get a lot, so that's what it is. I primed my face with the Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. So that's what I have on my face. I'm gonna go in with my BK Beauty 101 brush and we're going to begin to tap. It has that standard Tom Ford fragrance. Um, it's the same as the shade and Illuminate Foundation. If you are familiar with that, and we're gonna blend this out. Okay, so this is what I would say about one good pump is across the face. Here is my hand with that second pump. So I didn't use all of the second pump. So I guess a pump and a half, we could say, is what this side of my face is looking like with the foundation. As you can see, I have some texture here and I think it covered it up pretty well. I think we're sitting at a nice medium coverage here. Um, maybe even like light to medium, maybe. This is what this side of my face looks like without the foundation. But I do like the coverage of this. This foundation is described as a soft matte foundation. And even though it's still drying, I do like that I can still see some luminosity right here, that my skin does not look totally dry, you know, sucked out of all of the life and juices that it already has. And I, so far, am really liking this. So I'm gonna go in now with a damp elf sponge and I'm just going to pick up the rest of that foundation and we're going to start to blend that in. Going in with a full pump. Okay, so this is what this side of my face looks like blended out with a damp sponge. And ironically, that's so weird. I feel like we got the same amount of coverage with the damp sponge side compared to the brush. I almost felt like we had a little bit more coverage like initially with the sponge side. I don't know if you all saw that, but I was like, whoa, okay. So from my opinion, I like both sides, whether it's with a damp sponge or with a brush. I think the damp sponge definitely gave us just a hair more of some radiance, but coverage wise, I think the coverage is pretty much the same, which is nice to know, especially if you're someone who likes to have more coverage with their foundations, but you also like to use a sponge over a brush. But I am liking this. Okay, so let's try to build this up. This is saying that it's a medium to full coverage. So let us go with a full drop. We're gonna try to cover up my freckles. Um, I always say this because I always get some type of comment about it. I do not like to cover up my freckles, but it is the easiest way for us to determine the buildability of a foundation because my freckles are pretty prominent. But if I were wearing this foundation based on my liking, I would leave it like this because I love the way this looks. I got coverage, but I don't look cakey. I feel like you can still see my skin and okay. All right, so I think we could do a nice, uh, this this foundation definitely can build. Look at that. You can barely see my, my freckles. Okay, so I'm gonna come in close so you all can see what my skin looks like up close and personal. Okay, so this is what we look like up close and personal. So like I said before, I have some breakouts right along here, just a couple on my chin, and then a little a few over here. I think that this foundation has really nice coverage. Um, like I said, I definitely think that this foundation is definitely medium to full, just because it did cover up my freckles pretty well. But I do think that this looks beautiful. Um, and I, once again, you guys know I love a glow. I'm so glad that this is a soft matte and this is not like matte matte. Okay, so let's do some flash photography to see if there is any flashback and we'll be right back. So as we can see, there is no flashback. Do not mind my chest, y'all. Your girl's been in the sun. So my chest is a lot deeper <laughs> 
<laughs> in my face. But there is no flashback on my face, so that is good. This is a good foundation to wear if you were to be taking pictures, especially at night. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put on all of my makeup. I will come back, show you how everything looks on top of my makeup, and then we will check back in at the end of the day for my final thoughts. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so we are back. It has now been, it's been three hours since I've had this foundation on my face. So, so far I think things are looking really nice. I like this glow that is on my face. So I did set my face, but you definitely see some radiance with this foundation. So by it claiming to be soft matte, I do not feel like this foundation is in my opinion, I don't think it's really matte. I would say this is more like a satin finish foundation. Now I do feel like if you wanted to add a mattifying primer and you wanted this to be a little more matte, I think that definitely would help. Also, I always lightly set my foundation. So I also feel like if you wanted the foundation to look more matte, you could add more powder. So I did wanna put that out there. I do not add a lot of powder. I literally take powder, I dip my brush into it and I literally like pat my face with powder like that and that's it because I don't like a lot of powder so I do want to put that out there so you understand what we're working with. I also did not set my face with a setting spray. I kept going back and forth and I decided not to set my face. I really wanted to see what this foundation did in and of its own without a setting spray because I do know that this setting spray by Charlotte Tilbury which is the one that I would have used it does help to really prolong the wear of your makeup. So I wanted to see how this foundation wore in and of its own. Now, three hours in, let's come in a little closer. We do have some creasing going on right around here. So hopefully you all can see that. That is one of my biggest smile lines on my face. And if foundation is going to crease anywhere, it will crease there. In my opinion, the creasing is not bad. It's not to the point where I feel like this area is overly exaggerated and where I feel like it's starting to crease too much. So we'll just watch this area to see if the creasing does intensify or if this is just as much creasing as we will get. Um, over here, so I'll get in a little closer. Over here, sometimes foundation will settle, sometimes it doesn't. And so far, we don't have any settling, so that's good. Everywhere else along my face, I really feel like the foundation looks nice. I actually do like this color of the foundation. I'm not going to get a deeper shade because I feel like now that I've added bronzer, remember earlier in the video, this area was looking a lot lighter than the rest of my face. I added some bronzer and I feel like now this really is a nice shade. So I am glad that I tried 7.7 .7 because that will probably be the shade that I will get in future Tom Ford foundation. But this is what we're looking like three hours in. And I like it, it feels very lightweight. I don't feel like I have anything on my face, so that's nice. Those are the only things that I have noticed so far in the three hours that I've been wearing this foundation. So I will check back in at the end of the day. So stay Something tuned. Something else that I wanna point out that I really like about this foundation is that it's a poor feeling too. Um, and I think that goes back to those micro spheres that are going to help to blur the skin. I was looking at my skin and I was like, wow, I don't have large pores, but if a foundation is going to sink in my pores, especially if I don't use a pore filling primer, it's going to occur right here. And if you look a little closer, I know I came in closer before, but I forgot to point this out. Um, if you look a little closer, right along here, my pores are not emphasized and they're also they look a little more blurred in my opinion. So I am happy to notice that as well. It was something that I forgot to point out when I initially was doing this check-in. So I came back because I wanted you all to know that. I have pores on my forehead and looking at my forehead, I don't see that those are emphasized either. So I do feel like that aspect of the foundation in terms of it being blurring, I do feel like as of right now, three hours in, I can definitely say yes, I would agree to that. So let's also follow up on that at the end of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, so we are back. It is the end of the day. I've had this foundation on guys for almost 10 hours, okay? Almost 10 full hours. So I feel like we have put this foundation to the test. So let's come on in. So I'm looking down on my mirror. Number one, I would like to say this smile line held up pretty good. So here's the smile line here. And I feel like we did not have any excessive pooling of the foundation 
um, there. It wasn't any more foundation that decided to seep into that small line. So I am happy that um, even though we did get some settling, it did not continue to settle throughout the day. Looking again at my pores, I feel like I feel like my pores still look pretty blurred, pretty full, which I'm happy about. Um, for the most part, I feel like foundation is still on my face. I touch my chin a lot, so I typically tell you all that if you see foundation wearing away on my chin, more than likely it is me because I literally do this all the time. It's a bad habit. It's just one that I'm not breaking. But I feel like everywhere else the foundation is looking pretty good. I definitely have some dew right along here. Um, just a little bit of dew on my forehead and I would say some radiant right along here as well. I don't think this is what we would consider your traditional matte foundation um, because I know for me if I wear a, a traditional matte foundation then I'm still looking more mattified. I did not blot today um, but let me tell you what I did today though. I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you this <laughs> guys. This. I was outside today in these elements and it was hot. So I went outside earlier, it was about 3 p.m. So of course the sun is at its hot, hottest at that point and I was sweating. Then around eight o'clock, we went for a bike ride. We were outside for about an hour. So I was sweating then too. So I feel like for all of that perspiration that was going on, this foundation held up really, really good. And part of this dew that you're seeing was because I was sweating. That might be a little nasty, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I've like cooled down since then, but I feel like part of that perspiration was because I was sweating. Um, but I am really liking how things are looking. So let's do a little blotting. And after blotting, okay, this might be a little nasty, but I do want to show you all this. Look at that. That's not a lot of foundation compared to what I thought would this would have looked like. Interesting. I cannot wait to wear this foundation again. Do I like it? Yes, I do. Would I recommend this? I would. Now, I would not recommend this if you are thinking, hey, I'm oily and I really want a matte foundation that's not going to uh, allow for my oils to peep through. I do not think this is the one for that. If you are someone who doesn't mind a little bit of radiance to their foundation, um, but if this is not overly dewy, I think this would be perfect for you. I do feel like this would be a foundation that would definitely be suitable for normal combo skin. For dry skin, I would say give it a try, but I would also say if you have extremely dry skin, I don't know if the alcohol in the foundation would agree with your excessively dry skin just because we know that alcohol is going to be an agent that is going to dry out the skin and take moisture out of the skin. So I would say depending on how dry you are, you may, you may not like this formula. Same with oily skin. I think if you have excessively oily skin, you may, you may not like this foundation. If you have, you know, combo oily skin, if you use a mattifying primer, you might still really enjoy this foundation. I So I, I would say, I feel like this foundation really could work for any and all skin types, but of course everything goes with a preference, you know. I don't feel like my skin feels dry. My skin does not feel tight. It doesn't feel heavy. Like even when I was sweating today, I didn't feel the foundation, so that's really nice. Only thing that I think could be a little misleading is soft matte. And I think everybody's definition of soft matte is different because I think of the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation. And that foundation, I have to add oil to it because it is too matte, it's too drying. Whereas this one, I feel like it's not a soft matte formula. I feel like this is more of a satin-like formula. So I feel like that might be the only misleading thing about the foundation because I was not expecting this much radiance, but you know me, I'm fine with the radiance. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting, I was expecting it to be more matte when I heard soft matte. But hopefully you found this video helpful. If there are any other questions that I did not answer for you, please leave them in the comment section down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.